We're talking about food preservation in this newsmaker segment. Joining me now is UNL Extension Educator Brendan Offenkamp. Thank you for joining me today. Great. Thanks for letting me come. Yeah, so could you tell me why is food preservation important, especially here in Nebraska? You know, I think all of us, you're either going to the farmer's market or you have a garden in your backyard or you even have a tomato plant in a planter on your patio. We just love fresh produce. And what I'll tell you is I think the flavors are more wonderful. You can control what goes into your product, you know, however you're going to preserve that food. And so what I want to do is just remind people, however they do it, from pressure canning to boiling water canning to even freezing things. And right now the sweet corn's coming on, so I do a lot of freezing. I know I, last night I was with a large group of food preservation people, and they're out of freezer space, so they've got to go to preserving it in jars. So just remember, you've got to use research-based, scientific, you know, tested recipes. Yes, and um, could you expound on how we can do it, like in a summary fashion? Yeah, and so, you know, the, the way that you, whether you boil, use boiling water bath, which is the same thing as boiling water can, or there's, I throw out different words there, or whether you pressure can is all determined by science, and you have to look at the, uh, the acidity of the food that you're going to preserve. So those things that are more acidic can be boiling water canned. Those things that have less acidity in them need to be pressure canned and that's the big thing and so not all recipes are this way and then i'll remind you is things change over time and we're a very mobile society so something we did in the food preservation world even 15 20 years ago has changed and there's new bacteria new viruses just like our heart surgeon is using new updated technologies and so forth when you have heart surgery food preservation practices have changed. So even though you have that tested food preservation recipe right. that you pass down, I can't guarantee that that's a safe recipe unless you know where it originates from. Okay, and where can people find out like what to do in, in detail? Yes, you know what I would encourage you to do is Nebraska Extension maintains food.unl.edu, which you see up on the screen. And when you go to that website, you need to put in the search engine food preservation and then you'll come up with the picture that you're seeing. And that gives you the lowdown on canning, freezing, drying. And when we talk canning, that's wa boiling water or pressure canning. And there's a series of videos up there. There's, there's recipes up there, all of those kind of things. And then the other website that I would tell you is the National um, Center for Home Food Preservation which is maintained by the University of Georgia Agriculture that maintains that for the United States Department of Agriculture. But those are the two sites. You know, you can go to Ace Hardware supermarket or wherever and buy a ball canning book, but you want to replace that ball canning book every year or every two years because those recipes are constantly being tested again and science and the acidity of foods are being test tested. And if you think about it in your garden, the cultivars of tomatoes that you grow today or peppers are different than what you even grew two years ago or five years ago. So that acidity level is always fluctuating. Okay. Yes. Um, thank you so much, Brenda, for all this great information and tools. And thank you for joining me today, yep. too. Give me a call and bring in your pressure canner gauges, and I can test those at the extension office here in North Platte. Okay. Great. I surely will take that note down. Great. All right, deep dish pizza casserole is on the menu in Mr. Food's kitchen.